where we left off in the last demo, I was explaining how you can bring other images into Photoshop in order to use as color palette images. And you can see these different images. Doesn't matter if they're copyrighted, doesn't matter if they're high or low resolution, what we use them for is to steal color. So I filled in basically every flat that there is that's not open. I, th I think I see one that I can still fill in. So just to remind you how to fill in a flat color on your project, you have your black line art as an EPS smart object at the top. We're doing this at 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. But because it's a smart object, we can always enlarge it or shrink it or change it, and that vector will automatically rasterize to that correct resolution. So we don't want to keep this as anything other than a smart object. And so I lock it to keep it safe. Underneath that we have our colors. And in this case we just have one color layer. This is a simple sandwich so far. And the colors are flat local color. Though in some cases like the lime green, I was just trying to speed up and I'm doing more like flatting colors. But I can go back in and then easily place Colors I think are more appropriate. And then underneath that, I have a middle gray layer so I can see the, the, all the colors I'm adding. And then underneath that, a blank white. So right now, this is kind of how the colors look. So far, every color I've put in is within a contained shape on my line art. So the way I do that is I click on the line art layer. And then I click in the empty space of the contained shape. So for instance, this little shape is nice and contained. I have contiguous turned on for my magic wand. And it, the tolerance I'll usually keep at the default 32. And then you click on it, even though it's a locked smart object layer, it will still make a selection of empty space. Photoshop's very good at selecting empty space. And then I move to the flat color layer underneath. This does allow me to drop in color. I use the paint bucket, and that will put in any color into that selected space that's in the foreground color selector. What I was showing you at the end of the last video is if I'm on the paint bucket tool or the paintbrush tool, and I hold down option, the tool will automatically change to the eyedropper tool, which allows me to take any, any image in Photoshop and to steal a color from it. So I'm going to steal that gray from that illustration and just drop it in. So now I have that, that gray. I'll keep it with a white background for now. But actually, do I want the gray or do I want a green? I don't know. I might want the gray for this. And that's what's great about having all of these contained shapes, right? I can just click on them and fill them with new colors anytime. And then I can hold down Option. I can select a different version. I can put those in. So you can see why setting up all your flats to begin with, that can really help. even steal colors from yourself holding down option. Whoops, you don't want to go overboard. All right. So now how do we fill in flats when the shapes are not contained? It's not all that difficult. It's just a little bit more burdensome. And this is kind of how I do it. There's lots of ways you can do it. But I try to diagnose where it's not contained. Like I see that it's open here and here. And then what I do is I just make a duplicate of my line art layer. Making a duplicate will unlock it. And then I will go in with the color I want to use with the brush. 
So let's say I want like a green grass. I'll steal it from here for now. And then I'll use my brush at just kind of a basic setting, 100% opacity, a size that's not too large. Remember, we're in Photoshop, so there's pressure sensitivity with our tablets. And I'm going to choose a color that's this green. Oh, and I have color overlay on it, so I gotta turn that off. And then I'm just going to paint with the green to finish the shape, like that. Now I just close the gap with the color I wanna fill it in with. So now on that layer, that new layer I just created, this is kind of like a stenciling layer, I can then select inside it and you see it will stay contained because I closed the gaps. And then I go down to my flat color layer and I drop it in. And as long as that color matches what I drew with, I can make this all one searchable color. So then I go to my flat color layer. You can see where I kind of missed it a little bit and I can just define that edge however I want with a little bit more clarity. Maybe just something like this. Soften it a tiny bit. That's all there is to it. Now, what's the difference there? Now you see that, unlike all my other shapes, which are super contained, this one is a little bit different, right? And the reason you might use flatting colors is these two greens are different. And so if I use colors that are way different than each other, that makes it a little bit easy to see and to, to change them. All right, what's some other internals I need to clean up. It would be this one, right? So I can take that same green just for the moment. Go to my copy layer and fill it in. I don't even need to worry about overlapping anything. Like if I want to do this whole bush, for instance, in this green, that makes it very easy. Then I simply use my magic wand and select it. Then I go to my flat color layer and I drop that color in. To me, that's easier than using my magic wand all the way around the artwork, right? Then for the building here, let's see what color will work for the time being. Let's pick this one. Go into my copy layer. I'll paint in the edge. This is where colorists get to kind of invent something that's not in the line art. They get to decide where coloring should start and stop, right? So if I do that, and then I go to my flat color, or I do my magic wand, on my copy layer, it will select it all. Then I can go to my flat color layer, right? And then drop that color in. Oh, here we have a contained shape I missed. To me, it's just so helpful to have references to steal colors from. I know there's that brick wall around the campus green. I can start dropping those colors in. I can find some variations to that this color. Samples here. If I want to go really red, I can do that. I'll make the green look greener.
All right, last little bit. Now that this is open, let's see if I can go back to my copy layer and just select that remaining empty space or open space. It's not quite yet. It's still a little too open. You see how it selected kind of everything. So where is it leaking out? There we go. It wasn't, I was just on the wrong layer. And then I can add this one in. Very good. So this is just my duplicate layer. It can look a little wonky where you put your lines. But now I can move down to my flat color and just fill that in somewhere. What should I fill it in with? Let's do a gray, like a shadow gray. And then because everything is pretty contained, right? if there's a line art kind of missing, I can just use my brush and I can fill that in. So just working on the flat local color. I turn off my copy. I don't need it anymore. And now I can be a little bit more just kind of brute force. I'm just coloring on my flat color with my brush. I can separate them and then I can use my paint bucket and just replace colors. As I go, if I want to. Well, the blue is kind of nice. You don't need to limit it to reference. Colors. Sometimes you want to ease up on that a little bit. And then you can steal colors from yourself. So if I want to change the path color to this, I can. What if I want that path to look like it continues through here? I can use my paintbrush and I can divvy this up. I can say, okay, from here up. And from here across, I want it to be that color, and then I just drop it in, show you what's happening underneath the line art. I can just change it. And then the line art goes over the top. Same thing with this bush. If I want this to be different than the green here, with the color I think I might want to use. And then once I've divided it, this is, you know, choosing different flats. I can always change it later. It'll be very easy to select and change.